Uh, hey, 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 what's crack lagging? It's your boy, Bro Schmo, just in case you did not know. So, and we're going to be talking about day one of free agency. We're going to be giving out some grades for today's move. So, without further ado, let's go ahead. Take a look at how we are going to grade them because it's not going to be a traditional A, B, C, D. Because I feel like we need more nuance than that. So I came up with some grades. Came up with some grades, and this is how they're going to go today. I'll look at the chat in a sec. Mmm. Mmm. I'm drinking from my, my Gojo's Picks Cup. Oh, delicious. So at the very top, we're going to have money well spent. Basically, you went out. You got, you, you, you got good players that are going to address some very dire needs. On your team, right below that, we have okay moves. Like, maybe, uh, they were, they were solid enough signings. There were some good, maybe some bad. But all in all, it was pretty good. It was all right. And then, below that, I have money was spent. Because I feel like so, some of the teams today purely just spent money on real no high, like, high name, big notorious players. But they just went ahead and added some good depth to their team. And then, poor use of funds. Terrible, terrible, terrible signings. Terrible way to navigate free agency. And then, I love this, this next one. It's called, come on, do something. You know that meme? You're just going to be looking down. Come on, do something. Maybe it's a team that has a lot of cap and they ain't doing a whole lot with it. Maybe it's a team that has a few contracts on the roster that they ain't moving or releasing. It's like, come on, give me, give me something on this first day. Below that is, I mean, what can you do about it? What can you really do? Maybe this is going to be some of the teams that are in tough cap situations. And then below that, uh, they re-signed their guys. They, they weren't really active in free agency, but they went ahead. They, they, be, they, they were sure to keep some good parts so let's go ahead let's get into this randomly generated thank you for the super chat let's go ahead give him a nice cowbell i told marcus uh the franchise guy earlier today he, he needs to upgrade his bell to a cowbell but let's look at the commanders as they actually honestly they, they signed uh, signed a couple of notable guys prior to today coming in they had Zach Ertz, and we'll talk about Kurt pretty soon enough, randomly generated, but they, they signed Zach Ertz to like a one-year deal, I forgot how much it was, maybe like $5 million. coming into the day, and then they go out, they get Dorrance Armstrong, that one was kind of a no-brainer, I don't know why I didn't think that would be a good landing spot uh, for him in my landing spot video. By the way, I'm going to reference that because... I hit on a few. I hit on a few. But it's a fine enough. It's a guy that's trending upwards, and you're hoping staying with Dan Quinn, he will hit that he he will hit his ceiling. Tyler Biotish isn't a surprise. This is a team that needed a center. Biotish or Biotash, however you pronounce it, is a relatively solid center. It goes for three years, 30 million. I believe that's what Spot Track had him at. Uh Frankie Louvu's all right. Kind of is what it is. Get another linebacker pair there with uh, Jamin Davis. And then Austin Eckler. Cool. He's going gonna, gonna to be a really good running back core there with Brian Robinson. They also got Chris Rodriguez up in there. Zach Moss to the Bengals. Two years, eight million. Oh, we're going to have to refresh him when we get to the Bengals. I like that signing. All in all, I look at this and I'm like, what valuable position did they really address? No real positions of value. Like center, probably like the second, third most valuable position on the offensive line after both tackle spots. So, okay. But a linebacker, a running back, like I feel like they just kind of spent money. So I'm actually just going to go ahead and put them in. Uh, money was spent. I feel like that's fair. I feel like. That was fair. Here, since Zach uh, Moss just signed, I'm gonna refresh this real quick. Tennessee Titans. I was actually pleasantly surprised. 
Uh, like, uh, the Lloyd Cushenberry pickup, I, re- I liked a whole ton. Uh, I want to see them make a few more moves, but I really like that pickup. I kind of called the Jadobi Awuzie going to uh, Tennessee. To me, it just made a bunch of sense. He's playing for his former OC, which it's like, well, he plays on the defense. But the DC for the for the Titans used to, used to be a defensive backs coach for the Ravens, so he's seen Awuzie for like the last two, three years, twice a year. So I I figured that that would be a good signing for a team that honestly needed help at corner. Uh, Tony Pollard, three years, twenty four million, ain't half bad, ain't half bad. I'm not low on the on Luvu, Jerry. I'm not low on Luvu. I'm just saying it, it's not really a high valuable. It's not a very valuable position, valuable signing. A team that was like desperately in need of like some edge talent. You know, they didn't go out and try to make a bid at Brian Burns or anything like that. Uh, I mean, hey, Daniil Hunter's still out there. There's still still time to be had, so we'll find out. But we'll get to that in a second. Gojo wants to hop in, so let me go grab him. Come on, Gojo. Tony Pollard, honestly, three years, $24 million, ain't half bad. I think it's fine. Uh, I'm pairing them up there with Taji Spears. It's a okay. Like honestly, I thought these were like these three moves. Okay, I, I thought it's it's relatively money well spent. I'm a little bit higher on the Cushionberry uh, than anything else, but Awuze will bring some stability to that line. So I'm gonna go ahead and just put them in okay moves. I like that. Yeah, there's still a ton ton of talented players out there. This is only the day one. So, again, a lot of this can change. We're only two teams deep. <laughs> All right, let's keep rolling. Uh, Tampa Bay Buc- Buccaneers, I feel like it's going to be pretty obvious where they're going. They kind of focused on bringing in, re-signing their talent. They brought in uh, or they re-signed Baker. Three years, $110 million, could go up to 115 I believe. And I think, what, only the first year is guaranteed. After that, it's like $10 million? I'm not sure. Don't quote me on that. Uh, they brought back, uh, obviously, Mike Evans was the first big move. You tagged uh, Winfield. Like, uh, they, they they were focused on keeping some of their own talent, so we're, we're just going to put them in. Uh, they re-signed some guys. We're just going to put them there. Be like, that's right. That's A-OK. Okay, we're going to go to the Seattle Seahawks. Let me refresh this real quick, make sure no other big moves have been done. I'm not going to lie to y'all. I kind of figured Joe Mixon was already cut. <laughs> All right, Seattle Seahawks. <laughs> Noah Fan ends up being the tight end they keep. I was kind of hoping it would be Colby Parkinson. I kind of thought he was probably their best tight end. Uh, but they keep Noah Fan. Cool. Kind of is whatever. Uh, the, the big thing is... Leonard Williams, being able to keep him. He, he was really huge for them down the stretch. They've lost already kind of a ton of interior talent. If you haven't already, please go ahead, like the video, like the stream. But they've already lost kind of a ton of interior talent. They have a ton of guys that are free agents. And you're kind of hoping for maybe a bigger next couple of days. Not exactly like they have like a ton of cap space to really work with, but Patrick Queen still floating out there. You already saw Jordan Brooks. Head to Miami, so you're maybe hoping to bring back Patrick Queen or bring pair back up Patrick Queen with Mike McDonald. So as of right now, I, I think I'm going to go with the Seahawks in not necessarily receiving on their own guys because they obviously released some of them, but I'm going to go with, come on, do something. We kind of already knew top priority was going to be bringing back Leonard Williams. Now I want to see them go out and actually like make a move. Make a move of significance. Let's go. San Francisco 49ers, man. I had the hardest time figuring out where to put San Fran. I truly did. So they extended Colton McKivitz like last week. That was kind of like a, oh, I really hope that's not the direction they're going in. Uh, But sign in Leonard Floyd, that's pretty solid. And then overpaying for Yatir Grossmatos, that's kind of trash. That's kind of trash. I'm not a fan of that. I don't know what the deal, the breakdown is. Maybe they have a one year out. 
I feel like you probably could. I don't know what Chase Young's asking price is, but I feel like with what you just spent on Leonard Floyd and you tear gross Matos, you probably could have just brought Chase Young back. Whether rather than just get that half a year rental on him. Uh Ruben, for me, it is 7-Eleven. Ah. Thank you. Come again. Leonard Floyd, though, that that's a solid pickup. I don't mind it. But they also release Eric Armstead. It's not listed here, but I know that off the top of my head. I think they did have a no, I think the actually Gross Matos was the other sign in. But yeah, I mean <sighs> I don't love it. I really don't. So I'm I'm just it's not like they had a ton of cap space to work with. That was a big reason between or for the Armstead uh release, I guess mutual parting of ways. So I'm just gonna be put them in. I mean, I guess what can you do? What can you do? Alright. Let's keep this sucker rolling because I do want to get to the chat. Uh, maybe we'll we'll stop halfway through so I can uh, talk to y'all guys for a little bit. Uh, maybe may, uh, maybe we'll we'll get through eight teams and then then we'll go to the chat. All right, Pittsburgh Steelers. Legitimately, their only move has been Mister Unlimited. They don't even list them here. Where's he at? Where's Russ? Where's Russ? Well, it is what it is. Steelers, really, their only move has been picking up Russell Wilson. They've kind of cut all these guys, like you see there, Mason Cole, Cora Four, Mitch Trubisky. And all they did was bring in, essentially, who was going to be their starter next year in Russell Wilson, though it can be a competition because, listen, I mean, Russ is getting it only $1.7 it, it, I think it'll probably be a competition heading into camp. Ultimately, I do think Russ wins it. See, they still got a lot of money. There's still we, there's still plenty of good players out there. So right now, I'm gonna stick them in. Come on, do something. I'm gonna put them right behind the Seahawks, right behind them. Go into Philadelphia Eagles. Oh no! Oh no! Oh no! Oh no! All right, so Philadelphia Eagles. They released a couple of guys, obviously. Maddox, Bayard. You had Kelsey retire. You had Cox retire, uh, though he was a free agent. Anyway, they bring back Graham. And then they made some moves. Now, we know Hassan Reddick, Josh Sweat, they're currently on the trade block. Perhaps. So they bring in Bryce Huff. I'm not fairly confident in his ability to stop the run, but you know this guy's going to get after the passer. I'm totally cool with that. Totally cool with that. They bring in Zach Bond. They uh, they list him as an edge. He he can play off ball kind of well esque. Uh, he's a bit of an undersized pass rusher. So you bring in essentially another undersized pass rusher. You extend Landon Dickerson. That's actually a good one there. He's a very vital part to your offensive line. And then the big move is Saquon Barkley. I didn't think the Eagles were going to spend on running back. I mean, I had in my landing spot video, uh, I was looking at like a potential like bargains for them at the running back position. I think I had Austin Eckler as a possibility. I had J.K. Dobbins. I had Kareem Hunt because that's just the team they've been the last few years. I mean, they weren't willing to pay Miles Sanders. They brought in DeAndre Swift on a one-year, on a... Um, essentially a one-year rental. They bring in Rashad Penny after he was coming off the ACL. So I just kind of assumed that's the team that they are. You know, They may draft somebody, or they may go and get some budget option. They go out and get Saquon. First off, Saquon going back to New York is going to be a beauty. Now, I love this. You're, you're going to get Saquon behind an already established offensive line. Something that the Giants could never give him, unfortunately. That's great. Three years, 30, essentially $38 million. It's fine. I feel like that's kind of their biggest sign-in. Th these are okay moves, but like your secondary, it's kind of in crisis. 
kind of in crisis. And I feel like the, the longer they, uh, there's some good options out there. I'm not going to act like there's not. You could get like a Darius Williams, maybe at a good price. Like there's options out there. They could also look towards the draft. The possibility. This is a team that navigates the draft. Hello, well. But all in all, I think this was an okay first day. Some people are going to really lo look at the big name, big shiny name in Saquon and Bryce Huff. But I'm not fairly confident to how much value this will actually bring them. Though it's a lot better value than probably what some teams are getting. Uh, I'm still going to put them in okay moves. I think I'm going to put them right behind the Titans. You could call me a hater. It is what it is. Don't worry. Packers are going to be probably around this area. All right, all right, all right. Let's go ahead. Let's do one more, and then I'll get to the chat. We got the New York Jets. This will be easy to run through because they've done nothing. They've signed Isaiah Oliver. Now, they may be more active in the next couple of days. David Bakhtiari, I don't know. I don't know where he's at in terms of, like, will he be able to play next year? Don't know. Jets could probably take a flyer on that because they desperately need offensive line help. They could maybe take a flyer on him. A guy that used to play with Aaron Rodgers. This is right up the Jets' alley. This is what they did last year. But they've done nothing. So you're kind of looking at this team where they, ha yeah, they have a limited cap space, but it's like, come on, do, do something. Do a little bit of something. So I'm going to put them here. I'm going to put them ahead. Or no, I'm going to put them here. I'm going to put them right behind the Steelers. So still waiting for them to do something there. We'll find out. But let's go ahead. Let's run to the chat, see what y'all talking about. Oh, uh, we got Ruben saying, love my Pats bringing back uh, I'm way new. Yeah, dude, I honestly, I thought they didn't even value him like that. So I'm happy to see that because he, he is one of the best offensive linemen in the league. A guy that can play tackle and guard. I love it. Uh, Chat does. Brushma also give live signings and news right now. I'm going to finish a shower. I'm going to try to listen the free agents bureau. yeah yeah i'm gonna keep refreshing to see if something new comes up so don't worry about that uh if you got questions or anything at bro schmo in the chat or you can always super chat it's a great way to support the channel i would guarantee i will read every super chat uh if you're gonna invest in me i will invest in you uh and uh but if you add bro schmo i'll also try to get to those but we got a lot of teams to cover so i'm gonna try to keep this sucker moving Oh, yeah, Khalil Mack. Uh, I see. I see you, Kirito. Uh, I don't know if Khalil Herbert gets traded. What? He's got one more year. I mean, what? His, it's like, what? He's, you're going to get him for like, what? Like a late day three pick? Yeah, like, maybe? Maybe because it's like a one year rental? I don't know, man. Maybe you get a fifth rounder for him. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, Ridley prediction. We can talk about the Bears. I'm sure the Falcons are still interested. I said the Falcons. I meant the Jags. I'm sure the Jags are still interested. I don't know. We'll see. Hollywood Brown's still out there. So we'll, we'll, we'll find out. We'll find out. The rumor is a fifth. Okay, I threw out a fifth there. Yeah, Jacoby Percent's pretty nice. We'll talk about him in a little bit. Let's go ahead and get back to this sucker as we're going to head to the New York Giants who were busy, busy boys. So they go out and they get John Runyon, three years, thirty million. I think that was his projected uh, contract. Actually, it may have been that. That may have been actually a bit more than what his projected deal would have been. His projected deal was three years, twenty million. So he gets ten more than what either PFF or Spot Rack projected. But I get it. They're desperate for off offensive line. It's fine. Jameer Illuminor is interested. Yes, high quality backup, but hey, this guy can start. He has started and he's been very good for teams like the Patriots and the Raiders. And the Dolphins, actually. So, perhaps, perhaps things don't go well with Evan Neal. You just slide him into guard. Is he going to be a good guard? <sighs> That's yet to be seen. But at least you have now another option there at tackle. So I do like that. Devin Singletary, you lost 
Saquon, so you get Singletary here, who's a solid, reliable, reliable back. I imagine they're still going to be in on a running back, maybe somewhere in the third, fourth, fifth round, maybe like a Ray Davis or something. I imagine they will invest a running back at some point. But the big thing to talk about is the Brian Burns trade. We'll talk about the Carolina later. But essentially, you traded Lee, uh, Leonard Williams for Brian Burns. Brian Burns, still kind of waiting for a breakout year. People will be like, what? What do you mean? This is a guy that, and by breakout year, I'm, I'm still waiting for this guy to be elite. I'm still waiting. Like, I feel like him and Josh Allen kind of entered the season as, all right, we want to see these guys become more elite. Josh Allen took that leap. Brian Burns has yet to. But he's been very disruptive, and now you're putting him across from Kayvon Thibodeau. That sounds like good business to me. So I'm going to go ahead, and this is going to be the first team I think we put into money well spent. I mean, he got some offensive line help. Uh, I mean, I love Runyon, but I, I think he's an upgrade from anything you had, any options you had at guard. And you go out and get an edge, and one of the better edges in the league. I mean, you got to say he's at least top 15. You really do. So we shall see. Yeah, the contract for Burns was a little bit crazy, and you're really hoping, you're really anticipating. Like, okay, you're next to KT. You better break out, bro. You better a breakout. Man, is he really 5.5 million better a year than Montez Sweat? No, he's not. But that's just my opinion. All right, New Orleans Saints. We ain't got to talk about the Saints long. This is a team that's been restructuring contracts, trying to get under the cap. This is the same Saints team they are every offseason, trying to create cap space trying to get under that cap they started the year what 80 80 182 million over the cap so th this is a team like this is this is why i have this i mean what can you do category it's the saints you know they're going to be in cap hell i mean i mean what can you do what can you do about it all right, let's move on to the New England Patriots. re signed Jalen Rager. Oh, that must have been just recent. All right. So at first you saw that they were focusing on bringing back their own guys. Hunter Henry, they tagged uh, Kyle Duggar, uh, even though it's a transition tag, so someone could come in with an offer, but the Patriots can match it, and I imagine they will. Get Hunter Henry. They bring back Hunter Henry. They bring back Kendra Bourne. I like that. Kendra Bourne. Uh, up until the injury was probably their best receiver. And then they bring back Michael Awenu. And then they go out, they get Antonio Gibson, which is like, cool. They got a receiving back. They get Jacoby Brissett. I mean, I, he's better than Bailey Zappi. That's a better option. Cool. It's a one-year deal, so maybe they're not in on quarterback in this class. And then uh, Sione Taki Taki. I actually, I think that's a good move. I like I like Taki Taki. He he played really well uh, with the Browns this past year. I think it was the Browns. I can't remember off the top of my head. I think it is the Browns because Anthony Walker was hurt much of the year. But still, this is a team with so much cap space. You're like, where's the moves? Where's the big move? What you doing? Show me something. Calvin Ridley's still out there. Hollywood Brown's still out there. Let's get some playmakers. Let's get a tackle. I mean, shoot, Michael Wayne was listed as a tackle, so maybe that is their tackle. Maybe. Maybe. But I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to put the Patriots in. Come on. Do something. I'm going to put them ahead of the Seahawks because they have brought back good players. So they have Reece, uh, Awainu, uh Kendrick Bourne. Hunter Henry, they, they've brought back good players. Kyle Duggar, franchise tag. So they they have at the very least done that. They brought back players that have been working. Minnesota Vikings, Kirk Cousins, Atlanta Falcons. 
It is what it is. I hardly knew you. Knew, knew you. Apparently, Minnesota, they're in on potentially grabbing Sam Darnold. Yay. I mean, that's fine. But immediately, you gotta think. You gotta think that the Vikings are probably in on potentially J.J. McCarthy. You gotta think that. Maybe they make a move to trade up? To get, like, Jaden Daniels? I don't know. I don't think so. I think they're... I think they're probably going to be in on J.J. McCarthy, which probably they still will have to trade up for, just maybe not as high as pick three. Or maybe they will. Who knows? Who knows? Freaking NFL draft rumors are wild. Maybe he falls out of the top 10. Maybe he falls out of the top 20. Maybe he goes third overall. Who knows? We won't truly know until it actually happens. So let's look at what the Vikings did do now. They go out, they get Jonathan Grenard. That's great. They grab Andrew Van Ginkle. I'm a fan of G Van Ginkle. I think he's solid. I think he's solid. So they get some edge help. I like that. They were losing their top three edges. Marcus Davenport, who signed today with the Lions. Daniel Hunter, who's still out there. And then DJ Wonham, who is also still out there. They get Blake Cashman. This one, I kind of like scratched my head. Oh, you got, don't they, don't, isn't Jordan Hicks still on the squad? He, is he a free agent? I think he's actually a free agent. Yeah, Jordan Hicks is a free agent. That's on me. That's on me. But you definitely know that this team don't like Brian Asamoa, at least as a starter. They probably love him as a special teamer. So they go out and grab Blake Cashman, who you're hoping this guy can stay healthy. Last year was like the first time he could stay healthy. And it was like, yeah, he he he's hella good. It's just when, when healthy. All in all, I think these were very solid moves. We're, I don't think it was the best way they could have spent their money, but I think they were kind of limited on what they could do. I think they did a good job thus far. I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to put them in OK moves. Um, I don't know, man. I don't know. They're, they're going to be somewhere around here. I'll, I'll, have, I'll keep the Eagles ahead of them for now. I'll keep the Eagles ahead of them for now. All right, I'm going to talk about my Dolphins, and then I want to get to the chat. So if you got questions, comments, anything you want me to read out, you could super chat them. You could also uh, at Broshmo. Let's talk about my Miami Dolphins, another team that is also more of this like, I mean, what can you do? We, we were literally sitting there and watching some of our best players walk away. I mean, to be fair, Robert Hunt, Christian Wilkins. They got paid over $100 million. We weren't going to do that. <laughs> so, yeah, we were kind of screwed in that regard. We were kind of screwed in that regard. Kind of, it is what it is. And it sucks. I, I said this uh, on uh, that franchise guy's stream. Uh, I sent out a little uh, uh, super chat on, on his stream. It was like, man, I really hate this aspect of being a Dolphins fan where you see players just kind of walk out of your out of your organization, walk out of your lives because you can't afford to keep them because you're in cap hell, but you never have the draft capital to be able to replace them. So it sucks. So what did we do? What did we do? Well, we started last week with Jonu Smith. That's fine. I thought it was a good pickup. I like it. He's going to be really good in Mike McDaniel's scheme. And then, and then, we signed two linebackers in the center. Listen, I called this. I knew the minute, the minute I saw Aaron freaking Brewer being a free agent, I had him. Go back to my landing spot video. I had him as a Dolphin. Matter of fact, I think I had three years, 21 million too. Not to say that I came up with that projection for a uh, contract. Ah, three years, 20 million. But I said, hey, he's the type of guy that the Dolphins will pick up. At center, really good mover, really good in the run game. But he is such cheeks as a pass protector. Like Tua, God rest your soul, bud. I'm worried. I'm scared. Because that's the that's starting money on, on the offensive, on the interior offensive line. He's going to be a starter. So I don't love that. I actually really like the Anthony Walker pickup 
The guy's been hurt the last couple of years, but when on the field, he's really good. So I liked that pairing it up with David Long. And then we go out and we pay the freaking hell out of Jordan Brooks, who, yes, he's good. He's a, like he's very good against the run, but in coverage, it's kind of like, uh, uh. so I don't love that. I don't love it. I don't love it. This is what we're doing? It's fine. I get it. We're limited in what we can do. Because we have a lot of financial burden. So I'm going to put the Dolphins. I'm going to put them ahead of the uh, the uh, Niners because we didn't release a player of the caliber of Eric Armstead. In the whole, I mean, what can you do? I figured the Dolphins would be here anyway. I mean, what can we do? How can we really operate free agency without trying to hand out some budget deals? Kind of tis what it is, but what we're looking at right now. So I'm going to go ahead, take a look at the chat, see what y'all doing. Uh, the order is reverse alphabetical. What's up, Andre? How you doing? Who will the Vikings go for a quarterback? I kind of just went through with that rant. Settled on Sam Darnold and J.J. McCarthy. Uh, we got Resorp saying, uh, the Jags signed Gabe Davis. Do you think they are out on Ridley? Not necessarily. Reports are that they're still trying to get something done, but kind of is what it is. I mean, yeah, 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 Cameron. Wilkins walked. I mean, we, we could have put the franchise tag on him. It would have been... I don't know what we would have done financially. It would have been a nightmare, but we could have. Uh, we got, hey, Mil2K, how you doing, bro? Uh, just because it relates to free agency, how can one explain that linebackers cost more than edge rushers to a franchise when it comes to the fifth-year option? Uh, that's because th That's because what... At least this is what I think is going on is... I assume you're you're just talking about when it when it comes to like they they take the top, the average of the top five players at the position, but linebacker is such a weird thing because you even see this with Pro Bowl voting voting that they include pass rushers stand up pass rushers among the linebackers. That's how that figure comes. So that that's kind of what what it is. Kind of is what it is. Monte Parker does suck, Ruben. I do agree. Uh, Edwards is better than Eckler. Edwards? Who the hell is Edwards? Still. Oh, I can't think of... Uh, I'm, I'm, are we talking about Gus Edwards? Bro. I don't know about that. Uh, You notice that the OT market is usually quiet. Uh, I mean... Luminor got signed. I figure Tyron Smith is probably going to want to wait and like pick a team that'll be kind of winning. So, uh, who who else is out there? I mean, I guess I could look. I guess I could look. Uh, Trent Brown also probably in a similar situation where hey, he kind of want to pick some, kind of want to pick a winner. Jonah Williams. So, yeah, I guess it's quiet because, I mean, to be fair, it's not a great tackle class. Jermaine Illuminor was literally my top-ranked tackle free agent. And that, again, prior to releases and cuts and all that crap. All right, let's get back into this sucker. We got the Rams. I actually really liked what the Rams did today. I really, really do. Because... They bring back Kevin Dotson prior to this week. And then in my landing spot video, I had them get an alliance guard, but it was Graham Glasgow. Glasgow ends up, it's wild, because I had Jonah Jackson resigning with the Lions and Glasgow going to the Rams. It ended up happening in reverse. So with the Jonah Jackson pickup for the Rams, this Force, this is going to put Steve Avila at center, who who played center, I believe, at the Cedar Bowl last year. 
So suddenly you're feeling really good about your interior, your offensive tackle, your right or left tackle. It's still a bit of a question mark. You put a restricted tender on Alaric Jackson, but it's still a position you probably want to address. I don't know what they'll be looking at at cap space because, again, they went in on Kobe Parkinson, which I actually love that pickup. Tyler Higby is, like, very mid, and he gets hurt. Davis Allen, is he anything more than a wide re- or a tight end, too? I don't think so. You get, a, you get Parkinson, who's got some big upside. I like that, and I like that quite a bit. Now, are these high positions of value? Not necessarily, but they are. They were positions of need. You look at that other guards. Well, I say you look at that other guard spot, but with the intention of moving Steve Avila to center, that guard spot becomes vacant, right? You go out, you get Jonah Jackson, who, whatever you may want to say about him, if he is like your fifth best offensive lineman, your offensive line must be incredible. In incredible shape. Kobe Parkinson, I think next year could be a breakout year for him. Kind of depends on what happens with Higby. So I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna put them all the way up here with money well spent. I think they did a good job. Now they just gotta figure out the tackle thing, which honestly that answer might not be out in free agency. It really, really might not be. Going to the Chargers. Golly, we're going to the Chargers. All right, let me refresh this real quick. Uh, any new news? Uh, I think some of y'all said this in the chat. Brandon uh, McManus signed with the Commanders. Cool. <laughs> hey, Mill 2 k Thank you for the super chat. Hyped for the Raiders review, Raiders Nation. Oh, yeah, yeah, you should be hyped. You took Christian Wilkins from me. And Uncle Rico, my heroes. <laughs> uh, thank you for the super chat, Mill 2K. All right, all right, all right, all right. Let's talk about the Chargers. Another team who, they're not in the best cap spot, but they had options. You got Khalil Mack on the trade block. You got... Joey Bosa on the trade block. I assume Mike Williams is on the trade block. Might end up just getting released, depending on if anyone wants to throw a draft pick at him, hoping he can stay healthy. Because he's also pricey. And then Keenan Allen, probably the most likely of those four to stay. But given his contract, could be moved on from. So until they they make those moves, the Chargers can't really do much of anything. But they did do some stuff. They got Gus Edwards. That's fine. He's a good back, but he's a committee back. He is very much a committee back. To grab Will Tisley, he's a blocking back. He's a blocking tight end. Who the hell cares? So, like, again, the the Chargers, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put them in... I'm going to put them at the back part of this. Come on. Do something because they literally can't do anything until they decide what they're going to do with Khalil Mack, Mike Williams, Joey Bosa, potentially Keenan Allen. Until they decide that, they are literally restricted in the worst way. So let's go ahead. Keep this sucker rolling. Las Vegas Raiders. This is what you were here for, Mill 2K. This is what you're here for. All right. Andre James. I caught it. He was coming back. That was an easy read. Easy thing to figure out. And then you sign Christian Wilkins. Four years, $110 million. He deserves it. He deserves it. That's great. I love the move. You get a, one of the best run stuffers. Top of a guy that can push the pocket. There, uh, I mean, you still, I would love if they bring back Adam Butler as well, because I thought Butler was really good last year for the uh, Raiders. I say really good. I think he was solid. I think he was fairly solid. But Wilkins, man, you're feeling really good. And then you sign Uncle Rico, two years, 25 million. So part of me thinks the Raiders assume that they're out on this quarterback class. I've, not by by virtue of not necessarily not being high on it, but 
They don't want to give up the draft capital to move up. That's kind of where I'm thinking. So the Raiders knew, hey, we're not going to get Kirk Cousins, so and we maybe don't want to trade for Justin Fields because him and Luke Getze. I mean, I imagine you don't want to reunite those guys. So I, ass I assume they were like, you know what? Gardner Menchu, he was a starter all last season, almost got the Colts to the playoffs. He's going to have good weapons here, not Josh Jacobs. <laughs> But he's going to have Devontae. He's going to have uh, Myers. M Michael Mayer, we're expecting, up and coming. He's going to have options. As long as, you know, as long as our defense is really good. And the, we, we think Uncle Rico could keep us in games. I honestly believe Gardner Minshew is a top 32 quarterback. He is a starting quarterback in the NFL. Is he a high-end starter? Ah, is he a mid-level starter? Ah, that's kind of where I'm at with it. So I thought it was an okay move. I truly did. I love the Christian Wilkins move. Uh, I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to put them in this okay column. And honestly, like for me, just the value at quarterback kind of pushes them to the top of it. It's all fairly close, but I mean, I honestly believe that they truly got an upgrade at quarterback, though Aiden O'Connell is definitely still in the conversation here. But Christian Wilkins is kind of on a level that none of the players that the Titans, Eagles, or Vikings picked up. He's on a completely different level. He just is. Real quick, Cheesehead with the super chat. I appreciate that, buddy. He's uh, asking Aaron Jones landing spots. You got to imagine the Cowboys, right? You got to think maybe the Cowboys. I feel like it's the Cowboys. It's probably the Cowboys. All right, let's keep this shucker moving. We got the Kansas City Chiefs. Let's take a quick sip. Ah, that is good. All right, Kansas City Chiefs. Essentially... They kept some of they, they were looking to keep some of their guys. They re-signed Chris Jones, gave him a hell lot of money. He deserves it. He's the best interior player in the NFL right now. Uh, it's close with Aaron Donald, but Aaron Donald's getting to that stage where he's still probably better than 98% of the NFL, but you got to imagine he's going to start slowing down a little bit. But uh, they bring back Drew Tranquil. That makes me a little sad because I'm a big Leo Chanel guy. But if they don't plan on bringing back uh, Will Willie Gay, then shoot, that's going to be their linebacker core there, like with Tranquil, Bolton, and Chanel. So that's cool. They franchised LeJarrius Sneed. I'm expecting him to get traded. Sounds like second round pick is probably. The price is going to be, we'll find out. But uh, I'm just going to put the Chiefs in this. Uh, they resigned their guys. I'm going to put them right behind the. No, I'm not. I'm going to. I'm going to put them right in front of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, just because. I mean, it's Chris Jones. He's kind of on another level. Them being able to hold on to him, it's kind of super clutch. Moving up, we got. The Jacksonville Jaguars. Golly. Uh-oh. John Simpson? He's going to the Jets. That's okay. <laughs> That's an okay move. I mean, it's fine. It's fine. Uh, here, let me refresh this real quick. Uh, I don't see it yet, but... If you're telling me he's going there, then he's going there, I guess. All right, all right. Who are we talking about? The Jacksonville Jaguars. Golly, dude. So they franchise tag Josh Allen. Solid. Get a deal done. He's phenomenal. They re-sign Ezra Cleveland as spot rack projected. Three years, $28.5 million. Cool. That's great. Keep some of your guys. You only really got to, you didn't even, you traded for him and you, you didn't even really get to see what he can do because 
he was kind of forced out there to tackle because of the injuries you had, even though you wanted him to play guard. Is what it is. You trade for Mac Jones, you get you get a backup quarterback. You're just kind of hoping it's an upgrade from like a CJ Beathard. Because Trevor Lawrence, honestly, was kind of forced to play while being hurt. That kind of sucks. Now, let's get to their sign-ins. Mitch Morris, I thought, was a very solid sign-in. Luke Fortner's been kind of coming off a very disappointing year after a rookie year that some people thought was promising. Not this guy. So Mitch Morris, you get a reliable veteran there. I like that. Then they go and grab Gabe Davis. Three years, $39 million. There might be something still there in Gabe Davis, man. That he, you know he is a crazy good deep threat. Is he honestly anything better than Calvin Ridley, though? I don't know. I don't love it. I don't love it. But it kind of is what it is. You went out, you, you got a receiver. You needed to add some receiving talent. Darnell Savage, I think, is a really good fit for Ryan Nielsen. He's going to come in there, and whether he's being asked to play the slot or play safety, I think he's a good fit for the scheme. You probably, and I assume they got him at a relatively solid price. Three years, let's say maybe $19 million, I think would be all right. Maybe even less, like 15 15 and 19 I think would be fair. They add Devin Duvernay. That's just wide receiver depth is what it is. They add Ronald Darby. That is just depth there at the corner spot. To me, the Jags at pick 17. You're still looking wide receiver or corner. It's going to be one of those two spots for me. You could also make a case for... No, I don't think you can make a case for tackle. I really don't. So for me, it's still corner or wide receiver. Those are going to be the two positions on the board. Whether it's like, I don't know, Quinion Mitchell, Terry and Arnold. Uh, not Nate Wiggins. He's too small. Uh, maybe one of those two. I doubt that they're even available there. Maybe Brian Thomas. I don't know, man. We'll we'll see. We'll see. Maybe the Jags have to move up. If they really want to get one of those guys. But I, I think that's what's on the table for the Jags. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and put them up here with... They spent money. I don't think they really upgraded all that much. Just going to say that. Just going to say that. All right. I'll come back to the chat. We're going to go through a couple uh, couple more of these, and then I'll go see what y'all saying up there in the chat. Indianapolis Colts. They're just re-signing their guys. <laughs> uh, they brought, uh, They were able, they franchise tagged Michael Pittman. They were able to get a deal done with him. Three years, 70 million. Awesome. Zaire Franklin, able to bring him back. Tyquan Lewis, who's a very solid rotation player there. And then uh, Grover Stewart, who's one of, the um, one of the better run defenders in all of the NFL. And the Colts just absolutely love him. He might be, he's probably a lifer for the Colts. They're just re-signing their guys. Honestly, could be a... I could put them in this come on, do something category. But I think I'm just going to put them here with they're re-signing their guys. But I mean, they do have the cap space to really go and make a splash play if they really want to, if I'm being honest. All right. Uh, we got the Houston Texans. All right, let's do this one. So they start off by re-signing a bunch of their guys. Not Jonathan Grenard, but a bunch of their other guys. Dalton Schultz, they bring back Fairbairn, their kicker. Uh, Chris Boyd, who's a really good special teamer. Kind of shocked Eric Murray came back, but at a really good price. Desmond Keane, really good. I like that. Khalil Davis. And then they go out, and they just kind of add depth, if I'm being honest. They just kind of add depth. Like Fadakasi, just kind of a death piece on that interior with Sheldon Rankins as a free agent. They go and get their big meaty boy. Lonnie Johnson, that's, he's a depth guy. Jeffrey Okuda, but maybe he has starting potential, but it's, a, it's kind of a one-year trial deal, you know? Uh, Danico Autry, I really love that pickup. 
But the guy is 33. It's going to be probably on a pitch count, maybe like a five to 600 pitch count. Uh, five to 600 snap pitch count, I should say. So they they got depth on the interior. I mean, Autry, actually, you're going to play him out on the edge. And then uh, they grab depth in Mike Ford. Uh, they grabbed a punter, cool Townsend. He was already replaced by, uh, what, Matt Ariza, the former San Diego State punter there in, who's now there in Kansas City. And then Aziz Al-Shair, who's really more of a run stop in linebacker he's a thumper they paid a pretty penny for him but the thing is he's familiar with D'Amico Ryans they go back way back to San Francisco cool sign in but at the end of the day they just kind of spent some money there was no big move like like some Texans fans anticipated like dude that free agent landing spot video I put out so many Texans fans were pissed in that video because I had them make really no big move. I just had them re-sign some of their guys. And here we are. <gasps> Look, they made no real big move. And now they potentially might draft an edge. I'm not saying I'm right about everything. I'm just saying, don't come at me with that heat. Because I, I, got a, I, got a, I got a your mama joke just loaded in the chamber ready for you. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to put the Texans in. Money was spent. Again, not a bad category to be in. They got a lot of good depth. Not a bad category to be in. Really isn't. Honestly, if you're like, if unless you're in this poor use of funds category, that's probably like the worst. I mean, there's these teams that are like, okay, come on, do something. But it's like, it's not necessarily the worst category to be in. I mean, this this kind of can be. As a Dolphins fan, it kind of feels that way. But uh, let's go ahead. Let's take a gander at what's going on in the chat. I know there's a super chat there. Come on, boys. Booze in the chat for Dallas when they come up. Dang, Mill 2 k Thank you again for your super chat. I really do appreciate it. Odds of KJ Osborne reuniting with Kirk Cousins. I've got to say the odds are probably pretty good considering... Drake London's the only receiver on the roster right now. <laughs> Gotta think they're pretty good. Oh, man. Damian Lewis went to the Panthers? You're joking. Did he really? So, we, we know John Simpson's going with the Jets. That's fine. That's an all right pickup. And honestly, if he's the worst player on their offensive line, they're probably in an okay position. But he has been a liability in pass protection, unfortunately. Here, let me go ahead. Uh, I'm going to refresh this. Uh, refresh this as well. We got another super chat up in here. Thank you. What is that, Roosh? Texans had 40 players in free agency. You can't sign everyone. I expect either a trade or a decent sign-in after the draft. No big splash plays otherwise. Yeah, I'm not saying it's bad for the Texans. And again, this is literally day one. A lot can change in the next couple of days. Uh, can you imagine if they make a move for Legereus Sneed? See, I'm just fantasy booking at this point. Just fantasy booking. Thank you, though, for your super chat, Roosh. Um, ESPN's not updating it. Uh, do I got to go to the Twitter? I think I got to go to the Twitter. Try to get some of these moves. All right, got John Simpson, two years. I don't see. Okay, here it is. Here is another big guard, a big time guard in Carolina. Sources say Panthers are expected to sign four years, 53 million. What was the uh, projection on Damian Lewis? Uh, Damian Lewis's projection was four years, 42 million. So. He's getting a little bit more than that. Just a little bit. Just a little bit more than that. But uh, that must, must mean they might not feel fairly confident about Austin Corbett's uh, rehab. I don't know. I guess we'll find out. On a side note, if you haven't already, please 
go ahead, hit that thumbs up. I might as well do a quick little ad read here. As uh, the sponsor of today's video is Aurora. It's a digital security app. So if you like v if you like VPNs or you're like, hey, you know what? I kind of need to sure up on my uh, my passwords on the uh, on whatever site. So you if if you're looking to like just get yourself good security wise, if you're looking to avoid spammers and scammers from getting your information, then go ahead check out Aurora. It's in the description, the link for it. It's a free 14 day trial. So try it out for 14 days, get what you can from it. And if you don't like it, ditch it. But if you do, it's $12 a month. So uh, use the link in the description. I'll go ahead and I'll make it the pinned comment for the stream. Yeah, Blue Chew. I would love Blue Chew as a sponsor. Uh, you do have to use the link for me to get accredited. <laughs> so please do that they will ask for a, re uh, a re who referred you they don't have me as a sponsor you could just put in me uh email and it'll be a-okay but uh i'll leave the i'll go ahead i'll leave that there if you're interested i'll leave it up for a little bit but let's go ahead let's keep this sucker rolling we're going to the green bay packers green bay packers they honestly made two big signings Let's talk about Xavier McKinney. That's a huge one. I really like this fit. Matter of fact, I don't like to toot my own horn, but hey, I think I need to start to. Because when I get something right, I kind of no sell it. I don't celebrate it like I, like I should. I kind of called it. it uh, to be fair, Packers needed a safety. Xavier McKinney's a safety. It was kind of an easy call, but I called it. That, uh, go check my landing spot video. Kobe called it. Ka. So they get a good safety there. I like that. I like that. I like that quite a bit. And then they acquire Josh Jacobs. Four years, $48 million. And I was like, you know what? Honestly, I don't. I think, at least for this next coming year, pairing him up in the backfield with Aaron Jones, two guys who last year were a bit beat up, Having them split carries is kind of kind of lit. That's kind of sick. I like that. And then they went ahead and released Aaron Jones. <laughs> oh, lol. So it's like, okay, you know, you know what, Josh Jacobs, you are indeed, you are, in fact, the bell cow back here for the Packers. That's a lot of money. I don't love paying running backs like that. Kind of is what it is. But at the end of the day, I think, honestly, a, a team that didn't have like a ton of cap space. They went out and uh, they got two, honestly, premium players at their position. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to put the Packers up here in okay moves. Like, I thought they did solid. I'm going to put them at the back of it, though. All right, hold up. We got a super chat. We got AT Jet Jones saying, all right, P, Akira Toriyama. Yo, that's right, dude. That's right. Real quick. Real quick. I'm gonna jump back here, dude. Show off some of my Dragon Ball Z stuff. Got the four star Dragon Ball. Got a little Goku uh, Bento box. Got a little Piccolo Funko Pop here. Dude, Dragon Ball Z, that was my childhood. You wanna get out of here, Gojo? There you go, bud. Thank you for the super chat, and yeah, man. Stinking, stinking love Kira Toriyama, dude. But, I mean, he, he was already kind of preparing to hand off Dragon Ball anyway. I think he did in terms of the art anyway. I will be kind of curious to see what they do uh, with the storytelling, though, and whatnot. Uh, I'm going to go over this one real quick. Thank you, Durr! My favorite, one of my favorite trolls here on the channel, Durr, with Super Chat says, Hey, bro, any chance the Bears draft a quarterback? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I don't know, man. I'm kind of curious where Justin Fields will go. I'm kind of curious. All right. The Detroit Lions. Lions fans think I'm a hater. Maybe I am. Maybe I am, and I don't even know it. Maybe I am, and I don't even know it. But the Bears honestly made, I would say, three big moves with 
a solid move here. Resigning Emmanuel Mosley, I thought was a solid move. A guy that has had a bad case of luck the last couple of years with like back-to-back -back ACL injuries, but went on the field was is a solid corner. So they were they were like, hey, hey, come back on a stupid cheap deal. Come and try to contend for the star and corner spot. They re-signed Graham Glasgow, which I love. He's better than Jonah Jackson. There, I said it. I love Graham Glasgow. I'm a mark for Graham Glasgow. He can play center. He can play guard. I love it. Then they go out. They sign a one-year deal with Marcus Davenport. You may not love the injury history, but when on the field, he's pretty darn good. So you get some edge help. I like that. And you get it at a very good cost. And then they trade for Carlton Davis. This wasn't the trade for corner I thought they were going to make. I thought this was a team primed for Legereus Sneed. Doesn't happen to be the case. Just doesn't happen to be the case. Oh, Josh Jacobs' contract's only 12 guaranteed million? Yo, Shane. Say bad. I like that. So Carl Davis, they send a third round pick. They get him. They get two six rounders. So honestly, I think it's fine. You get a very you get a quality starting corner there, and at the very least, you're gonna get cornerback depth. You're getting cornerback depth. Unfortunately, those four guys that I've just went over, injuries have kind of been a thing for them. Not a big thing. Well, for Marcus Davenport, it has. They've been beat up the last couple of years. So I don't love it, but I think they're very good moves. I want to say money well spent, but I'm really hoping for them to make that one big move. I really am. So I think I'm going to put them right, right behind the Raiders. And okay moves. Well, remember, this is just day one of free agency. We will see. We We'll see if they make any other further moves. All right. We got the Denver Broncos. They sign freaking Brandon Jones to a three-year, $20 million deal. As a Dolphins fan, Brandon Jones ain't all that. He ain't all that. And they handed this man $20 million. I thought Sean Payton didn't want to coach, come back to coaching for a rebuild. This feels like a rebuild. You release Russell Wilson. You release Justin Simpson. You release Chris Manhurts. I get it. You're in cap hell. You trade Jerry Judy. You should have done that before the trade deadline. We don't know what's going to go on with Cortland Sutton. We'll see. Bringing back PJ Locke is solid. He, I thought... Honestly, I thought he was really just a good special team player. And then he came in and started at safety last season because of some of the injuries and did really well. I say some of the injuries because Kareem freaking Jackson couldn't stop himself from getting suspended. He did really good. I honestly think the PJ Locke re-signing has been their best freaking move. They re-signed Will Lutz. <laughs> Listen, man. We have to use this. We have to use this poor use of funds category, right? Let's go ahead and use it with the Denver Broncos first team in there. And I'm going to tell you, I probably have two more in me that I'm going to put there. Poor use of funds for the Denver Broncos. Don't at me, at me. <laughs> Dallas Cowboys, man. <laughs> Dallas Cowboys, man. So they got one re-signing. I don't know. I, I don't think they have any. They've done anything else. Uh, they are in a cap situation where they're kind of limited anyway. They told Mike um, Michael Gallup that he could go out and seek tra a trade. Uh, I'm not going to put them in a poor use of funds because they're not using their funds. I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to put the Cowboys right here in the bottom of. Come on. Do something, Jerry. Why are you vacationing, Jerry? Jerry Jones, what you doing out on your yacht? It's go time. It's business time. It's clobbering time. I'm CM Punk now. Come on, man. <laughs> all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. 
Let's go back. Uh, let's go over the Cleveland Browns. This will be quick. Uh, so, honestly, I don't know what to do with the Cleveland Browns. I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do, man. I like the addition. I like acquiring Jerry Judah. I like that quite a bit. It's going to be a one-year rental because I don't think they're going to be able to afford him after this season. But I like that acquisition. They brought in Jordan Hicks after losing Anthony Walker. I like that. Jordan Hicks is fairly solid. And then they bring back Zadarius Smith. They also bring back Maurice Hurst. Not listed here, but I'm pretty confident that they did that. Correct me if I'm wrong. I'm almost 100% confident they did that. So you have one part of them just kind of retain some of their players. Like Zadarius Smith, honestly, is quite huge. And then another part of them, okay, let's go get a solid linebacker to replace Anthony Walker. Let's go out and, and honestly, Taki Taki. And then let's go out, let's get some receiving help, Jerry Judy, who he has a first-round pedigree. You like to believe that talent's still there. Like, honestly, I wanted to put them in here with re-sign their guys, but they've made other moves. So, I th think I got to... I don't want to say money well spent, because you can't really say that about the Browns. But they've made some okay moves. I'm going to put them back here. I'm going to say... Nah, I'm going to put them right there. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put them right there. They, they have made some okay moves, honestly, with honestly where they're at cap-wise. They've, they've done it, and they've done it well. All right. Cincinnati Bengals. I'm going to refresh this. They don't have Zach Moss. We'll talk about Zach Moss. So, so for the most part, they kind of started the day off by just trying to retain their guys, and then word comes out, T. Higgins. He's done. He just wants to be traded out there. So we're going to kind of have to wait on what happens with them, right? Or at least with that. But they retain Drew Sample. They're a big fan of Drew Sample. He's their best block in tight end. They retain uh, Travion Williams. He's like running back three on this squad. Uh, so fine. Cody Ford's depth. So they were just kind of retaining their own guys. But also you still got, they got a lot of funds and you still got, DJ Reader out there. They bring in Geno Stone, which I like that. I, li I like Geno Stone, the player. But I assume their safeties are Jordan Battle and Daxton Hill. Unless they're going to move Dax Hill to the slot. Because I'm pretty confident Mike Hilton's only got one more year left on his contract. And, I mean, I listed him as a potential cap casualty this year. And that's not a reflection on his play. The guy's been still playing at a really high level. But it's like, now you got these three safeties. And, like, I don't know, man. I don't know. Uh, they did sign Zach Moss. Uh, what was the contract on Zach Moss? Let's go look that up real quick. Uh, Zach Moss was two years, eight million. That's really good for a very quality for a quality back. Is he a number one? Probably not. But that's a quality back. I don't think you, you if you're the Bengals, I don't think you need a number one. So I think I'm just gonna stick them with. I'm gonna stick them here and retaining their own or re-signing their guys. I mean, they grab Gino. They grab. Well, they grabbed Geno Stone. I may have said Geno Smith like six times in this video. I'm sorry. Say a lot of names. Sometimes some slip. And then Zach Moss, I think, is a good pickup. I don't know. I think I'm going to wait to see that T. Higgins trade before I actually figure out are they like a team that made okay moves or are they a team where they're more in this like, well, money was spent. All right. Uh, we're going to go to the Chicago Bears. All right, so the Bears, I got to start off with, like, their best move was re-signing Jalen Johnson. They put the franchise tag on this dude, and then they were able to get a four-year, $76 million contract, which I thought honestly thought he was worth more. 
They have become instant winners because of that. This is a team, this is a defense that's coming to its own, and it's got some superstars. And then they bring in Kevin Bayard, who's, yes, he's coming off the down year, but you got to believe there's a top 10 linebacker still in there. I mean, you spent relatively cheap to get him. I like it. DeAndre Swift, I'm kind of whatever about it. I get it. I, I, some people are going to like it. And I get that they had injuries at the running back position last year with uh, Khalil Herbert. There, I said it. Khalil Herbert and Roshan Johnson. I can't even remember who their other back there was. Uh, Deontay Foreman. Should we? I think we even saw a little bit of Travis Homer last year, right? But at the end of the day, like, I'm not going to be wild about a spending three years 24 million i get it swift's coming off a really good year he is but you got to be scared that this guy can't stay healthy right and i imagine you bring him in because the backs you have you're not confident that they can stay healthy doesn't feel great but i love the bayard move i love being able to retain johnson actually i even like uh, Traver uh, Tra 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 Travarius. More, I think, is a very good pickup. Uh, he's going to bring in a, lot, a good special teams ability. So I know after kind of like talking down, stinking beyond the DeAndre Swift thing a little bit, I really, really, I really like, again, I, Jalen Johnson is just such a huge, huge move. You have one of the best corners in the league. And one of the most volatile positions in the league. Corner is just such a valuable position. I love it. Kirill, it's not that I didn't think you needed a running back. I didn't think you had to spend seven million. What was it? No, that's like eight million a year on a running back. That's me. That's that's what I think. I don't love the move. I'm not saying it's a trash move. I'm just saying I don't love the move. I like it. I just don't like, like, like it. All right, Carolina Panthers. They did officially release Bradley Bozeman. Cool. They threw $100 million at Robert Hunt. I didn't think he was worth Like, I love Robert Hunt. I think he's one of the best guards in the league. Unfortunately, he was a little beat up last year. I didn't think he was getting $100 freaking million. Uh, project his ped projected contract four years seventy million. So what? 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 What is that? I'm trying to do the math in my head, but I'm stupid. Oh, four years seventy million. I should just do division. Like a little under. What is it, like fifteen? No, four times fifteen would have been sixty. It was a lot closer to twenty. Uh, I don't know, man. I mean, I guess it's five years, so I guess it's not like that big of a difference. But still, I thought it was. I thought it was a lot. I thought it was a lot. Uh, they trade Brian Burns and they get a second and a fifth. Parent, like, dude, if you weren't gonna re-sign this cat, you should have took your two firsts and a second. If the Rams were offering that, I don't know if. Rumor is, again, I don't know if it was confirmed or anything, but freaking jeez Louise, dude. All right, what, what was the other move that they just recently made? Damian Lewis. Hey, Kinlaw's going to the Jets. That just came in. Look at that. News still coming in, guys. News still coming in. So Damian Lewis, he's solid. 53 million feels a little bit. Like a lot, but I, I, I'm pretty sure his projected contract was close to that. It was four years, 42 million. It wasn't. It was okay. So I feel like they may have grossly overpaid their guards. I feel like offensive interior players, though, made a lot more than they were projected. I'm just going to throw that out there. I'm just going to say I don't love what the Panthers did here. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to put the Panthers in. Poor use of funds. They're not at the top because the Broncos. Ugh. But I don't love, not necessarily I don't love the players they acquired. I don't love the money that they spent. And I don't love that they didn't 
didn't get like a first rounder for Brian Burns. Oh, you got a question? Was he, if he was worth it? I don't know, man. I don't know. Buffalo Bills is a team that has literally been trying to get under the cap, so much so that they restructured Josh Allen's contract today, and they achieved that. They got under it. But they also had to release a hell lot of people. Jordan Poyer, Mitch uh, Morris, yeah, Deontay Hardy, uh, Tra Davey, uh, Trey White. Davious White. There we go. And their lone sign-in has been Mitch Trubisky. Not ideal, but they've been trying to keep some of their other players, like A.J. Epinesa. I think that's huge. Extending Deion Dawkins. He has been their best offensive player, offensive line player. I like that. Taylor Rapp was relatively solid for him, and you get to keep him on a relatively cheap deal. I like that. I like that. Uh, Allegretti going to the commanders, going to the commies. That's such a mid move. Here you go. That's such a mid move. He is a depth player. So bills, you know, they're just going to be, I'm just going to put them in this. I think I'm not, they've re-signed their guys, but they've also had to cut a lot of them. I'm going to put them in this. I mean, what can you do about it? What can you really do about it? We had to get under the cap. We kept some of our guys. We're happy with that. Joe, uh, would you like Joe Mixon to the Vikings? I wouldn't hate it. I wouldn't hate it. All right, we got three teams left here. Baltimore Ravens. This is a team that their cap situation wasn't, like, great. So they knew they were going to lose some of their players, like Geno Stone. Potentially Patrick Queen. But they were able to hold on to Justin Matabuke. They were able to get a deal done. You got to love that. Hold it on to Malik Harrison so you maintain a guy that's been there the last, what, four years, three years, something like that. Nelson Aguilar was actually pretty good for him. He's a good, I think, a good wide receiver three or four for the squad. He's a good depth guy. Should put it that way. So they're not going to be, I'm not going to put them in re signing their guys. Because obviously some of their big names had to hit free agency. I'm gonna put them in the. Uh, I'm gonna put them right behind the Bills there, and I mean, what can you do about it? What can you do about it? I mean, this is the cap that we had. Yo, they're giving Allegretti three years, sixteen million. I don't like that. I don't like that at all. Yo, Joe, I already went over to the Chiefs, bud. Okay, we got the Atlanta Falcons. And, uh, whoo. They signed Charlie Warner. Warner. He's a blocking tight end. It's literally what he is. Three years, 12 million. Feels a kind of a little hefty. Is what it is. Obviously, the big move here is acquiring Kurt Cousins. I don't think they're done. But even if they were, this one's huge. So his first two years, I believe, are guaranteed. So he's be, he, they expect him to be here for two years. He's a 35-year-old quarterback coming off an Achilles injury. Do you feel great about that? Probably not. But I like him in this system. I like him behind this offensive line. I like him with those weapons. And you'd be like, what? What weapon? Drake London, Kyle Pitts, Tyler Algier, and B. John Robinson. I believe Kirk Cousins, even if all he could do was hand off the ball, I'd like him. I like him doing just that. But he's behind a really good offensive line there. He really is. So I'm going to give this squad, because you know he's there for at least two years. And then in, I think, his 2026, he only has 10 million guaranteed. And that's when they can probably make a decision. Unless, of course, he goes full Mr. Unlimited Russell Wilson. Then there might be a problem here. But as of right now, I'm going to say they spent their money well. They needed a quarterback, and they spent on a quarterback. Kirk Cousins has been really solid. 
if he comes out and he plays similar to like a Matthew Stafford last year, if he plays like he did last year, period. How about that? But I think if we're going to try to like make some parallels, I think he could be like Matthew Stafford last year. Where, because I mean, obviously you're, you look at Sean McVay and you got to imagine Zach Robinson's systems can be similar. So even if you don't have the most mobile quarterback, you could get the ball out of his hands fairly quickly to his weapons. They just got to acquire some more weapons. So I'm going to put him right there because I like the... I mean, I may not love that the first two years are fully guaranteed, but it's Kirk Cousins. I think it's a win if the whole contract's not guaranteed. All right, all right, all right, all right. We got one more team here, one more team. I'm going to give this one last refresh. Okay, okay. So we got the Arizona Cardinals, another team who came in actually with a significant amount of cap. I believe they were in the top 10 of teams with the most cap. And we cannot say that they significantly spent. Their best sign in here is Sean Murphy Bunton. Three years, 25 and a half million. I'm kind of shocked. I thought Sean Murphy Bunton, being a little beat up last year, might get stuck on another one year deal. But the Cardinals were like, hey, we really need cornerback help, and you're a good corner. Come along. Come on in. We'll take you. But after that, I mean, Bilal Nichols, Justin Jones on the interior, were they not that impressed with Dante Stills? I mean, to be fair, freaking Ledbetter was actually pretty good for him this past year. So I, I don't think they needed to sign two guys to $50 million contracts. Not contracts, but to $50 million combined. I don't think they needed to do that. And then they signed Mac Wilson. Three years. 12, 13 million. That's fine, but wasn't he... He didn't have a lot of snaps last year for New England, right? Yeah, let's check that real quick. I don't think he played a ton for New England. But don't quote me on that one. All right, let's find New England Patriots. I'm not going to lie to y'all. I'd be shocked if he played more than 500 snaps last year. He played 305 snaps last year. 305 snaps. No one even tell me he was hurt because he played in 16 games. This guy hasn't played more than 400 snaps the last four years. What are we doing? You got all this money and this is how you're spending it? Does no one just want to come to Arizona? Is that it? No one wants to come to Arizona? Yo, best believe I'm putting them in poor use of funds. Apparently nobody wants to come to Arizona. Golly gee. Oh man, but that, uh, there we go, man. We got we got this this is where I see free agency currently. So we got money well spent again. This is like teams that I think used their what they had the most. We got okay moves, teams that I think did fairly solid today. Money spent, teams that may have just invested in depth, not necessarily high profile players. Poor use of funds, probably the one category you really don't want to be in. We got the Panthers, Cardinals, and Broncos there. Come on, do something. This is basically a category for teams that you're kind of waiting for them to make some moves. Big, bigger moves than they've made. And then we got down here, resign your own guys. And then, of course, teams, they're just in tough situations. Can't really do anything, but golly gee. Who would you want to play for the Bidwells? Bidwells? What the hell is the Bidwells? All right, guys, but I think that's going to be it for me tonight. I'll be back again tomorrow, see how uh, how free agency went. We'll be back again to do this again. Maybe some of these teams will have better day twos. And we got a long off season, man. We Next two months, we're deep into draft season too. So you know those final rankings are going to start coming out. Uh, I wanna, I'm want i hoping to get my quarterback rankings done this week, but... We'll see. I got, I got to do all the Photoshop. And I want to put clips in there, but I'm always scared I'm going to get hit with copyright. 
But thank you for joining me. Before y'all head on out, please hit that thumbs up. It's always much appreciated. I'm much obliged. Uh, Bidwell owns the cards. Ah! Who do you want to play for? Who would want to play for the Bidwells? Okay. Ah, I mean... I mean, I feel like the cards are up and coming team. Like they're they're a team that has, you have they have their quarterback. They're just missing a few weapons. I feel like ugh, the defense just needs some big moves. It's just those weren't the big moves, you know. Anyway, y'all have a good night. I'll see y'all tomorrow. Thank you for hanging out with me. This is always a fun time. Again, please hit that thumbs up on your way out. We had over four hundred people in the chat, only a hundred likes. Why y'all hate me? <laughs> Anywho, I'll catch y'all in the next one. Later.